Get your fig. Butter, 80% fat. All margarines, 80% fat. Even polyunsaturated margarines, 80% fat. St. Ivor Gold, 40% fat. Eat the one with half the fat. Gold from St. Ivor. is a very gentle art. It looks like very gentle art. It doesn't look like powerful art, but the power is internal power, more, more or less like soft and hard mix them together. Soft power and hard power mixed together. And you don't have to like a six foot five or six foot and have a physical big build to learn the hard style as such. So even a slim build or a medium build, as soon as you've got a mind to put into it. Because Wing Chun is mainly come to the skill and technique to overcome the power. Whenever you learn martial art, you must have know how to polish your weapon as such. We're using the punch and these three knuckles. There's a punch. We're using this as a knife hand and attack from that one. The other side, palm strike, elbow, knees, mainly heel the bottom part of it. And it's a major part of the, our, the Wing Chun weapon. Using the dummy man allows all the techniques to be used strongly. It hardens the performer's arms, training him to expect and accept the pain of his blows. the art will be transform your character, your personality. If you're a lazy one, you're the sneaky one, and you're the coward one, whatever is all from the art you will transform your own personality and your character from it. And that would be one point. And the second point, you, you know exactly where you are, then you know how far. If you've been defeated, you know you're, you're not there. You know if you'll be defeated in the club, you'll be got hit in the street. One, two, three, four. The essence of Wing Chun is speed. Double punches are flung out almost simultaneously. And the students are taught to keep their hands relaxed and unclenched for all but the moment of contact. A little bit faster. In the club, practicing in the, in the, in the club, more violent they take, more violent they're gonna act. Only physically violence not mentally. The physically got to be aggressive, but mentally got to be controlled. You see? So that will be totally different thing altogether. From the beginning, the student might be have temper. That means they're mentally out of control. The te that means they have temper, they're very aggressive-minded, and yet their physical ability is not up to the standard of what they might want to do. Until they take the punch, until they got a hit somewhere, if they are the person who really want to learn self-defense as such. And then eventually, they get up to that standard. When they're good at it, their mentally will be cooled down because they know how confident, confident they can handle people, but their physical got to be extremely aggressive. And yet they know exactly what they're doing. Got a bit more high than that. Mustn't let it lose, yeah? The way they move is very limited. The, like the rolling hand, the hand they roll, the hand they roll back, the way they move, it is, is, the, it is the method to fight. They only practice those movements. The muscle used to those movements is for fighting, really. It's not for uh, sort of a competition or anything like that. And then from time to time, they build it up. It is the muscle contracting and relax, contract and relax, and contract and relax. And eventually they get the heat and power, which is you don't have a big build, and you don't make a big move to, to develop the, the, the deadly skill. When we fight, we don't have rules. We don't have, we have no rules. Because we train for real self-defense. Self real self-defense, I mean real fight. When you have a real fight, you have no rules.
There are no concessions to the women that study here. They are expected to stand up to the sparring with the male students in preparation for actual fighting conditions.